Hey, hey, everyone, Jim Phoenix here. My God, if you hear me knocking, you better invite my ass in. That's the total title of this episode, invite my ass in. But apparently <laughs> iTunes had a cry face about this. So just invite me in. And I am here. Just with- my ass, though. <laughs> invite just my ass in is a completely <laughs> I, Invite me up, Susan, a completely different podcast. I don't know if we can talk about that one. That is a completely one, a completely different one. It's, it's a cross between Burning Angel and Blue Blood. I love it. It's the one we do for horror porn with Dan Brannick. <laughs> Just invite my ass. In. But here we go. The premise is simple. If you're a Buffy fan, great. If you're not a Buffy fan and you're with me, we never, I've never seen Buffy before in my life. But I have two super fans with Xander. Say hi. Hello. And just say hola. Bonjour. 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 Sorry to any French <laughs> listener. <laughs> no, I always apologize. I live in Quebec. I live in Quebec, and it's like I apologize to French listeners too all the time. I, I think that's my next podcast. Sorry, all French listeners. <laughs> and then we have with those two super fans. We've got Travis, the guy who's only seen it once. Travis, say hi. Howdy. And then, of course, myself, Jim Phoenix, who has no idea what Buffy is. I, I actually thought Willow was the more popular star because American Idol or whatever the band came How I Met Your Mother. Pie, and How I Met My American Pie Mother or something like that. Yeah. I had no idea that that didn't even exist until season three or four. So what the hell do I know? I just learned that. What was Who's Buffy in this one? Michelle Geller? Sarah Michelle Geller. Sarah Michelle Geller, who was not the cheerleader in Heroes, but was in Clueless. No, wait. No, no it wasn't even that's Clueless. Inaccurate. She was in All My Children. Yes. Or, okay, good. So that's how much I know about this show. And I found out last week or week before that Angel is a, a vampire. I, Spoiler I alert. Out. I found that out. Uh, and I yeah. found out that Negan, last week, I found out Negan is not the dad. Maury came in, is not the father. Sorry. I found out that Negan's a bad dad. I had no idea. In a, in a lot of episodes, he is. There's a movie that he's in that I have not watched yet that Evie did for Stupid Demons. And I think he's a bad dad in that movie, too. It's just, <laughs> he's got he that made a, nailed. He would have made a great Kate Craven in Spider, or Spider-Man movie. Craven. <laughs> Maybe. I, I think so. Maybe, maybe. All right. So this is episode 11, which is called what? Out of mind, out of sight. Great. What's it about? Okay. Well, in the cold open, we hear Cordelia talking about how spring is just a wonderful time of year, particularly because of the spring fling. And she is hoping to be May Queen. And she's got her dress specially made. And uh, her date, Mitch, says that uh, he's sure the dress will be blue to match her eyes. And she says, my eyes are hazel, which, yeah, I don't know how anybody can see her face and not just stare at it long enough to know what color (coughs) her eyes are. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) Oh, are you okay? Behind me, Satan. (laughs) The only thing I can think of whenever I see her is how smooth her face is. How smooth? Uh, it's like you're an just trying to make me watch this show. It's not natural. Oh my god, her face is so pretty. It's so smooth. Could she she takes care of herself. She's a very lovely woman. Well, we have Carson from Queer Eye to think about that. Thank you very much, Carson. By the way, we were talking face. about how David Boreanaz hasn't aged very much since Buffy. Um... Charisma Carpenter is about the same way. She looks roughly the same as she did. Oh. It's her name, Charisma. Yeah. yeah. That sounds like a porn star name. That's rude. Let me write that one Sorry, down. It just does. That's my new porn star. But no, name. she uh, she still looks very much the same as she did 20 some odd years ago. <laughs> more of a stripper name, really. Not to talk about That's what I meant. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, more of a stripper rude. name. <laughs> she's, it's her name. I, she's a nice lady. lady. There's, something, the there's something about her character. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, from all intents and purposes, I've heard she's a very nice person in real life anyway. <laughs> oh, that, that's great. She'll take this joke nicely. Then. <laughs> but, Until yeah. we get a season to sis and to cancel the podcast. <laughs> Right. Like, could you explain why you said my client was a stripper? Like, well, technically, sir, he said that uh, a porn star. 
I said stripper. <laughs> oh, Case okay. closed. Allegedly. It just sounds like the name. Just say allegedly and you'll be fine. Yeah, that's what we always do now. Uh, chastity would be another one. Good, you know, chastity is always the... I knew one named Skittles. I, I knew one named Faith Nude More from the band mm. Faith Nude More. Ah. And, and Doe. Doe was very... Doe told me something about stripping. Oh God! Okay, Doe told me something about stripping that I would like to pass on to our future strippers who are listening to this podcast. Yes. Don't pick a short name for a stripping because when the DJ announces you, you'll miss it backstage. So pick a longer name, something you can recognize easily in a crowd going wild. Hmm. There's our tip for today. So we for, for all those aspiring strippers that want to enter the uh, exotic dancing industry. It's a pandemic, man. It's a pandemic. People are like jobs. Well, hell, that's. I guess I can go strip now. Yeah, you can do so at the safety of your own home on my free cams. Are sponsored by? No, we're not sponsored by my free cams. OnlyFans. Well, um, we're never sponsored by OnlyFans. Fuck OnlyFans. Only because they kind of did like the feminist fuck you version of like, oh, you're empowering yourself. Fuck you. And I don't exactly. know. Exactly. That's. They caved into the alt religious right money. And then they took it back. And then they flipped it back. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I love it. Purely business decisions. Which is, hey, this, this is a business. Oh, oh uh, uh, today's sponsor is fucking OnlyFans, really? Okay. OnlyFans, where you can get like homework crop or some shit. I don't know it's what it is. Okay, so go on with this. Out of sight, out of mind. The cold open where she's having hazel, which is not her eye color, and no, she's having a dress made of blue, but not paisley. Got it. Um, in class, they're reading Shylock and having a lively debate about it, and Cordelia's got some bad takes on things, but she has clearly done the assignment um you know, the teacher gives her credit for that i think this is kind of one of those like subverting the expectation as well because you wouldn't think that she would be very Able studious to, to talk about um, shakespeare merchant of venice but she she is fairly studious she just has a very um privileged point of view with how she talks about this because Shalak's talking about how the Jews are persecuted and she was like all he's doing is like whining and it's like me 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 and it's like you know you, you've you got to take stock of everything that's going around on around you it's like when I hit this girl with my car she was crying about how her leg was broken but it's like I was traumatized by the accident too <laughs> voodoo priestess I hope you're listening to this episode because damn it that's your story <laughs> A hundred percent. We will say allegedly because I don't know what the statute of limitations for a hit and run is. hundred percent. You just kind of did Voodoo Priestess's story. Oh, my God. So that's <laughs> where it's been. It's, it, Voodoo, your, pre, your story is a Buffy story now. So I now know Cordelia in my mind firmly. Thank you for that analogy. Yes. So. And she's she's getting uh, she's going to meet with her teacher later because she has a lot of ideas for her term paper and she feels like they're all contradicting each other. So she's actually like planning, you know, um, office time to try and make sure she gets a really well done paper and all of that. Uh, we see a lot. It's room. like you can be smart and pretty. Well, sometimes. We go to the locker room and Mitch is in there and he's just being gross. Uh Locker and talk is bullshit. It's fucked Wait, up. Which one's Mitch? He's Her the date. boyfriend. Yeah. Okay, He's the sorry. naked one. Sorry, sorry. Um, He's the a, naked one. A bat just kind of floats towards him. Like with, a baseball bat. No, yeah. Like a oh. bat. yeah. <laughs> that would actually make sense. Like the bat bat. I'm like a bug. Baseball yeah. bat. The hell? Yeah. And like we hear this creepy disembodied giggle and he gets the shit beat out of him. And then on the locker is the word look. Look. You look at me. You look at me when you're killing me. <laughs> uh, after the credits, Cordelia is like going on like a full campaign for May Queen. She's got C-shaped sweets. She won't give Buffy one though because she said she doesn't want Buffy's vote anyway. And then Willow and Xander come up and they are trying to talk to her, but they get like caught up in their own inside joke from before Buffy got to Sunnydale. And they're just laughing really hard. And they're like, what kind of an idiot wants 
to be May Queen anyway. And Buffy's like, well, I was May Queen at my old school. Like, oh. Does that mean that she wanted to be a winner? Or it sounds like it's people choose it for you. So, I don't know. Maybe she can't pay it for it. It seems like almost like a prom queen type thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, Principal Snyder. <laughs> who is uh, telling everybody, no, this was not a death in the locker room. There are no dead kids at Sunnydale <laughs> High this, this time. week. <laughs> um, I, like, I like that little, that little <laughs> add-on. I thought it was pretty funny. Arn Shimmerman, uh, he he delivers it so well. <laughs> he uh, so Mitch is injured. He's being pulled out on a gurney. Buffy asks him what happened, and because nobody at the school is questioning it anymore, when she's investigating, he tells her, and she wants to go investigate. And Snyder's trying to prevent her from going in. And then Will and Xander are like, "Didn't Mitch say something about wanting to sue the school?" And so they distract him that way. Well, to be fair, he's she's like, oh, I need to go into the men's locker room because he forgot his. Was it chain comb comb his comb? And he's like, no, it's the men's locker room. No, that's not what his issue with it is. His issue is that she's always around whenever incidents happen. He wants to keep her away from that stuff. Yeah. I I think. Anyone who wants to go into the men's locker room is just sadly mistaken of the the horribleness that actually awaits for them. Like men are, as a general, are not just like hygienic as a as a kid, and uh, a bunch of them together are even less so. If anyone's wondering what the men's locker room looks like, it, it's it's a circle of hell. It's one of that them. smell. Yeah, like absolutely o- old sandwiches for some reason, and uh, but feet. nobody brought food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that kind of sums it up. And, and gym clothes that have been washed all term. And uh, showers that nobody uses. Uh, we had we okay. So this is weird. We had to take a shower as a you know from seventh grade up. It was mandatory. But it was just, it's just bizarro land. It, it's yeah. We didn't have time because when I, when I was in high school, when our gym class was over, it's like, here, go change. Oh, there's the bell. You have four minutes to get to class. Uh, no, we, we, we were. There was no way we would have been able to do that in time. We were I think I did it bunch. once. We were a hygienic bunch. You must shower. And it must be like this. And good luck. And all sorts of madness. So they didn't really have any of that at Buffy school, but they did have a beaten to death. Oh, sorry. Nearly beaten to death body. Yep. Um, in the lunchroom, Giles comes and sits with the trio, <laughs> and they talk yeah. about uh, the attack. They're trying to figure out the possibilities. Is it invisibility? Is it telekinesis? Is it a poltergeist? Um, Xander, you know, says something about the bat. Um, they're like saying that it can't be vampires because vampires aren't typically invisible and. Xander makes a vampire bat joke. That's pretty funny. And I, and actually, um, I was like, yeah, that's actually pretty good. Uh, Everybody they, gets the one. They kind of cling on to the ghost theory and they're like, okay, cool. We're going to see if there are any recently dead children at Sunnydale. Sunny. And it's, it's Sunnydale. Yeah. The answer is yes. <laughs> uh, Xander's going to do research with Giles and Buffy's going to talk to um, Mitch's friends. Okay, I have a question. Did any of the dead children they research are actually the ones that died during the season? I don't think they actually go into they, detail about no. it. Oh, God. Like, they don't even... They had the perfect opportunity to call back to the other characters who died during the show. And like, oh, fuck it. We're just, they've only got we'll 45 minutes to get all this stuff oh. in. They can't show all the basics of research, you know? Yeah, and there's like 10 to 20 dead kids. So, yeah, F it. <laughs> Uh, Cordelia is all upset that Mitch is beat up because he's going to be all bruised and she's worried that their pictures are not going to look cute. Uh, we see a point of view flashback to Cordelia telling, uh, just whoever, you know, whoever's eyes were looking through, like go away. Um, but in real time, Cordelia's friend, Harmony played by Mercedes McNabb. I love her. Uh, she gets pushed down the stairs. By we don't know who Cordelia is trying to say that she tripped, but Harmony is like, no, I was definitely pushed. Um, her ankle is hurt as a result of the fall because it was a it was a long staircase. Yeah, that, she's lucky that that's all she hurt. 
Um, Buffy hears some, she hears like flute music and she goes into the band room, but the, the room is empty. Oh, damn. Um, the gang talks about, uh, Buffy cause Buffy like what like made contact with the attacker during all of that. And she asked Giles if he's ever like, you know, made contact with a ghost and he kind of explains it. And she's like, well, this like this person was warm and solid. So I don't think it's a ghost. So they figure they're dealing with invisibility cool. and they are trying to figure out how it can happen. Also important to know is that Willow is wearing a Scooby-Doo shirt. I noticed that. Yeah. <laughs> they haven't officially like been referred to as the Scoobies yet, but it's a nice little like nice. wink and a nod. So to their uh, mystery, mis- mystery ink type of type of ways. Um, they figure out that Cordelia is kind of the common denominator of everybody being attacked. Uh, and Giles makes a joke that Buffy's going to have to like actually listen to people to be able to invite an invisible bad guy. Uh, in the library, Angel appears to Giles and he's a uh, broody and moody as, as he always is. Uh, he can't be around Buffy cause he just loves her so much. But he also warns Giles that there's something big in the works with the master. And he wants to know what Giles knows about prophecies and slayer lore. And Giles talks about this prophecy that's been lost for centuries called the Codex. Uh-huh. And Angel's like, Oh, I know where it is. And it's like, what? Yeah. We, there, there's not a lot of attention given to the fact that Angel just knows where this prophecy is. He's like, well, don't worry, I'll bring it to you. Yeah, he says, it's not lost, it's misplaced. I'm thinking maybe he has something to do with it. <laughs> there was one, there was one, uh, when they were meeting up in the library that I thought was funny. Again, like, I thought Xander actually had a second funny line where, uh, Cordelia comes in and she goes, oh, this is all about me, 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 me. And he's like, oh, well, for once, you're right. (laughs) You know what? I just thought that was kind of funny. He's like, well, this time, yeah, it actually is about you. Did they? Okay. Without any spoilers, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to ask a question. I'm going to make a statement. I think Xander and Cordelia get together. It's my statement. I also thought that Negan was a father. So the hell do I know about this show? But because of that, I'm going to play off their ability for like the kindergarten hair pulling, liking each other type thing. They're going to be a couple. Screw Willow. I, I think Willow ends up with uh, Giles. Yep. That's my prediction right now. Oh, God. No, and, probably. <laughs> right? Yeah. And Buffy the Master might just kind of like hang out a bit. So we have anyway, Angel is severely older than Giles, I'm guessing. He should kind of know about prophecy. Is that almost like the forcing the plot line from Angel? Like, oh, by the way, I, oh, yeah, I know that book. I have that book. Like, well, yeah, well, why would you fucking read it then? Or is that going to be a spoiler? I'm very confused by what you're asking. <laughs> well, basically, why is Angel bringing any questions at all to Giles since Angel is a far more experienced than Giles ever going to be? Because Giles is Buffy's watcher. And if this stuff involves the Slayer, then Giles has to kind of facilitate that. Okay. Okay. Cool. So hopefully we'll see if Angel has the book or not. Uh, We have another flashback to Cordelia and her little posse in the bathroom, kind of just like gossiping and shit talking a guest lecturer and this one girl keeps trying to make a joke about the guy's toupee and they're all ignoring her and telling her to go away and then Cordelia makes the same joke she had made about the toupee and they just kind of all laugh and she's left there all alone and uh, we oh, by the way though we find out that uh the 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 uh the lady the that's playing the uh character the one that gets ignored is uh Cleo Duval which People, if she looks familiar, she was in one of the most underrated horror movies of the 1990s. She was in The Faculty. Oh, John Stewart. Yeah. That Freaking amazing. She played. Words. Um, Hold on. Let me pull it up here in a second. It With, should be a teacher, right? No, she was Stokes. She was the quote unquote gothy chick, huh? which came out the year after this. See? But by the way, I freaking love the faculty. The faculty is such a good movie. I, I recommend it too. 
I recommend it too. So we have some guest stars in this episode. Go mm-hmm. on. Uh, we see Cordelia won the title of May Queen, and she's giving a speech. No. Uh, Willow has no. a list of missing students. The most recent was named Marcy Ross. Her only activity was band, and she played the flute, which is what Buffy heard when she was going to the band room. So they assume that this person is Marcy Ross. Uh, Buffy goes to investigate, and she pulls down because it's got, like, the drop tile ceilings. So she climbs right. up into the ceiling, and she finds, like, Basically, somebody's been living up there. There's like a whole bed type area. There's food. There's, you know, a bunch of different John stuff. Nelson? Uh, she grabs a yearbook and they bring and brings it back to the um to the library. It confirms that it's Marcy Ross. They see uh they see Every single signature inside of it says have a great summer. And they all explain to Giles that that means that like they don't know her well enough to write anything meaningful in the yearbook. That's what you write when somebody says, hey, sign my yearbook. And Wait. You know, you're not close to them at all. Really? Mm-hmm. I'll be right back. Motherfucker. Oh, man. I'm not going to that reunion now. Everyone, everyone. You're right. Every one of them said have a great summer. Damn it. <laughs> Yeah. What the hell? But what's really funny is um even even Willow and Xander wrote that in her yearbook and they can't remember her at all. They had Willow four said, classes have a great with her. Summer. <laughs> yeah. It's a little bit different. <laughs> so they're they're just kind of like, wow, she just she was basically ignored and being on the hell mouth, like it kind of uh I think what is it that Giles refers to it as? Hold on, I've got it in my notes somewhere. It's like um, quantum something. Quantum physical. Uh, quantum mechanical. Huh. So reality is shaped by perception. So everybody was like perceiving her as invisible, and she actually became invisible. Huh. And we see a flashback of her in class, like trying to raise her hand, trying to participate in the discussion. And Miss Miller just keeps calling on everybody else around her, but never her herself. And then she suddenly turns invisible right there in class, and nobody notices. <laughs> yep. Uh, that's actually a pretty good feminist statement. For how women are treated in grade school to high school and sometimes college, and where, everywhere. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I didn't want to be totally pressing say everywhere, but that's probably more accurate, right? Uh, the studies, the studies will show that a, a boy be called more often than a woman or a girl in class from like K to twelve. Another thing from that flashback that I felt was off was Xander participating in the classroom discussion by raising his hand. Like that doesn't seem in character for him, right? <laughs> was he riding a skateboard when he did it in the flashback? <laughs> yeah, he's just like skating all over the room with the guitar. So Bart Simpson of them. Did he have a slingshot in this episode? That'd be kind of cool. <laughs> um. Marcy tries to kill Miss Miller, but Cordelia comes in and finds like the plastic bag around her head and pulls it off and saves her in time. And the word listen is scrawled on the chalkboard. Uh, Let's see. In the yearbook, they notice that Cordelia's face is scratched out. And that's when Cordelia comes in and says that this is all about me. Me, me, me. (laughs) Which is very accurate. (laughs) Um, they're trying to talk her out of going to the coronation that night at the bronze. And she's like, no, if I do that, then Marcy wins. And Buffy's like, she actually has a good point. She can serve as bait. <laughs> she's like, wait, what bait? Huh? Uh, well, hold on. Then- the bronze. Mm-hmm. They're having the high school May queen coronation at a club. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that was strange the too. Hell like not the gymnasium, not the football, the club. Okay. <laughs> Fuck it. Well, we know how much we love the bronze, so it makes sense. Yeah. Peach pit. Okay. Uh, Buffy goes with Cordelia while she tries on her dress, and for some re- for some reason, instead of going into a bathroom or somewhere, she's like, "You can change in the janitor's closet." Yeah, that was uh, so strange. <laughs> they just needed to have a way for her to be locked in a room. Yeah, and her and Buffy are having kind of a heart to heart. You know, where Cordelia is talking about how she's. You know, she's popular, but she's lonely because everybody's basically just always kissing her ass. They don't really actually care about what she has to say. They're just, you know, want to be in her orbit. And she's like, I'd rather be lonely around other people than lonely by myself. And Buffy's trying to tell her about when she lived in L.A. and she was May Queen and she gets what Cordelia is coming from. But then she hears uh, 
Cordelia getting sucked up into the ceiling and she follows along behind her. She gets thrown down through the drop tiles and then we see a syringe go into her neck and they wake up at the bronze tied to chairs. Meanwhile, Giles, Xander, and Willow are following flute sounds throughout the high school. They berries are... and cream, berries and cream. <laughs> Sorry. Is that a thing? It's it's a TikTok thing. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm old. Um, they think they're going to like either, you know, grab Marcy or talk to her or, you know, they're just, they don't really have a game plan, but it doesn't matter because they, when they get to the source of the sounds, it's not an actual flute. It's a cassette player. And then they're locked into this like boiler room type area and there's a gas leak and the handle's broken off and they can't get out of the room because the door is metal and everything else in there is metal and they can't take the chance of creating any sparks because it would cause an explosion. Um, at the bronze, Cordelia is saying that she can't feel her face. And I'm with you. Uh, See, I'm not the only one that does it. <laughs> There's a backdrop like for pictures, and it says "learn" and glitter. So she's doing. Uh, she's uh, doing a saw four here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Marcy appears. She's got like her whole climactic bad guy speech, and she's like, "Everybody's gonna be remembering your face, Cordelia." Once I'm done with you. And then she whips this cloth off of this tray of medical equipment and a scalpel comes towards Cordelia's face. And she's like telling her how she's a spoiled little brat, which isn't entirely inaccurate, but this is not the right way to go about doing it. Which Buffy basically says, she's like, you know, I felt sorry for you at first, but you're kind of, you know, losing sympathy very quickly from me. She breaks out of her chair, hits Marcy, knocks her into a curtain so she can see her. Meanwhile, Back at the school, Angel saves the day because he could smell the gas. He came to deliver the codex to Giles. He could smell the gas. He's going to take care of the gas leak since he doesn't have to breathe anyway. Um, So now Giles has the codex. That's going to come in handy for the next episode. And none of our trio is dead. And back at the bronze, Buffy and Marcy are fighting a little bit until... The FBI comes in? That was so fucking <laughs> stupid. Well, yeah, you saw them fun. earlier. They saw them when they had the uh, the ceremony like in the, the quad of the school. Yeah, there's brief like, shots d- of them. Yeah, because so, was it Xander that said, was it Xander? Or who was it yeah. mentioned something? Does Cordelia, did Cordelia hire bodyguards? Yeah. Because they're not hiding. <laughs> yeah, so basically it ends... They fight and then the FBI swoops in and then they grab her and they're like, right, we'll take it from here, whatever. They escort her out of the building. Um, they can't disclose what they're going to do with her, but whatever. Um, so, uh, Like the FBI FBI? Yeah, the yeah. FBI. Uh-huh. Yeah, they actually just like, for some reason, they just swoop in and just, you know, save the day. Just take her away. As they do. Yeah. But we see um, she is led to a classroom and you can't see anybody else in it besides a teacher. And the teacher's like, all right, everybody say hi to Marcy. And you hear a bunch of voices say hi, Marcy. And she's like, open your textbooks to this page. And it's all about assassination. And you know what I was expecting? What? I was expecting her to like sit on somebody accidentally. Like I'm, I'm wondering <laughs> how often that happens. But um, yeah. She, they're all being trained by the FBI to be assassins and shit like that. Yeah, which becomes and- a very, very important part of the show. Oh, I'm just- no, I'm just joking. They never talk about it again. <laughs> yeah, okay. another missing uh- kid. Yeah, this this goes in the same room with Owen and the bug eggs. <laughs> That's a little bit different though, because that was actually like a leftover thing in the school. This is just something like, oh, and this is the FBI, and this is how they kill people. Well, it's just, as in, like, oh, this is a cool thing we can continue with, and we never talk about it again. Yeah. Damn. I, I have a question. Yeah. Do you, do you guys think that this person was just a sociopath to start with, or the hell mouth not only made her invisible, but kind of warped her personality so she wanted to kill? I, uh, I don't think it was the hell mouth. Yeah, I think it's a maladaptive trauma response. 
Maybe. Okay. Be- because I, you know, a lot of, you know, especially people that weren't part of the in crowd or the, the inner circles or any of the special groups, you know, people like me, you you feel invisible. So it's like, it's just to the point where you could turn invisible in front of the whole school and no one would notice. Yeah. I was the same way. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but uh, I like, I actually sympathized with her more than most of any of the other villains in the whole season. Um, I, I just don't see the revenge aspect of it, I guess. All right. So we haven't got the ending of the episode yet, though, have oh, we? Oh, sorry. I thought, that was, I thought the FBI, the FBI is, is not the ending? ending? Yeah, it kind of is. But then it also ends with Cordelia in the hallway the following day. And they're all trying to invite her to lunch with them because she's coming up to them and thanking them for helping her because they didn't really Aww. have to. And, you know, was, I thought that this is a moment where she's actually going to join the gang. But what ends up happening is, you know, Willow invites her to eat with them. And then her boyfriend or a date or whatever, comes over. It's like, you're not hanging out with these losers, are you? And then she just is like, no, I was just being charitable, giving them fashion advice. And then she walks off and, you know, I, I thought that she would have become a good character at that point. Uh, after hearing her complain about, being lonely and not being able to connect with people. She had that opportunity and she just declined. And we do start to see a little bit of that shift. Yeah, you do. Yeah. And that's it. That's it. Yeah. And 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 Travis, I I think that would have been a great way to go with it. Like bit by bit as well. With with Cordelia kind of going, no, I'm going to be with the, like the people as people instead of like judging by everything else. Well, it definitely is a, it's kind of baby steps, I guess, because yeah. in the next episode, she's she's a part of it again. She's dead. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. It's, so but this yeah. episode has a, a, a lot to unpack. Oh, I did just for... Okay, hey, Travis, what do you think about the... Wait, overall, what do you think for the episode overall? I thought it was okay. I thought that the whole thing with the girl turning invisible because nobody noticed her was kind of stupid, personally. But um, I liked having that expansion on uh, Cordelia's character because I know that she becomes a part of the show later on. And I was always wondering when it was going to happen. So right. it was nice to get that development started, but yeah, I-, I would give this one like a two and a half. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Xander, how about you? Oh, well, this is another, like I said, this was a solid, I mean, I didn't like it as much as the one before it or the one after it. Right. But it, like, it was one of the, like I said, I, you know, we talked about it a couple minutes ago. It was, she was one of the only villains, at least in this season, that I could see myself empathizing with more so because of, I, because I, she's one of those that I think that if none of this, the whole being ignored and feeling invisible would have happened to her, I don't think she would have been a villain because mm. she just wanted to belong. And, you know, I, that was me growing up. Um, but no, I would give it a... I wouldn't go as low as... I would give it a good three and a half. Wow. Like, it's still pretty solid. And I like that, you know, they're exploring other villains than just, you know, vampires. Like, they're expanding on the whole... You know, even though the big bad evil guy this season's a vampire and she's a vampire slayer, they're expanding on the mythos more than just one type. Right. Very, very cool. Jess, what do you think? Um, I'd probably give it a four just because I love that there's so much Cordelia focus. I love Cordelia as a character so much. Um, at like the whole FBI thing is a little weak to me. I, I think that's probably what brings the score down for me is it just feels kind of like an easy out. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, it's almost like an afterthought. Like they weren't sure how to wrap the story up. And thank God for Angel to bring his FBI team. <laughs> but I, I, I generally enjoy this episode. So that, that is that is pretty cool. Though. This is not the one. Okay, the last time, like, okay, maybe I'll watch it. This one for me is going to be uh, like uh, if I was watching a series, maybe I'll just watch it anyways. But I, I do enjoy that they're trying to develop Cordelia through her own. A Cordelia heavy episode and actually flesh out her character more than just being like the, the glitz in the face of it all. I, I, yeah, the FBI thing just seems like the big fake 
Deuces Machina ending. Uh, like, uh, and then the FBI comes. Like, oh, yeah. no, we could have, like, instead of wrestling with, rest, really wrestling with the people who were marginalized in the school, and we all know people who were marginalized in school, to the point where they just felt at best invisible or, or were suicidal, you know? Yeah. And, like, at best, Trying to, I believe, what one girl was the, the goth chick you said in faculty, like at yeah. best trying to find other people to hang out with, and at worst, just you know having a major addiction like most, like that everyone else dealt with it. Like, how do you deal with like uh, being depressed at school? Like, well, alcohol and drugs, <laughs> the most really available things to make yourself feel a bit better, but or less of anything. Yeah, so. I, I wish they would have taken, they had an opportunity to really take that more seriously and they just kind of did like the FBI bullshit. Yeah. I look forward to the next couple episodes and, oh, wait, the next episode is the last episode of the season? Yep. yep. <gasps> oh, boy, is that going to be a treat for everyone? Okay, so on behalf of myself, Jim Phoenix, and my special go hosts, Xander and Travis and Jess, I bid you adieu. Bye, everyone. <laughs>